hello students welcome back today we are going to discuss human reproduction part 6 today's concept is fertilization fertilization is defined as the fusion of a haploid male gamete and a haploid female gamete to form a diploid zygote is called fertilization the idea of fertilization was known to anton von leeuwenhoek in 1683 arrival of sperms into the female reproductive system it is due to the insemination what is meant by insemination male discharges semen into the female's vagina close to the cervix during coitus or copulation or sexual intercourse is called insemination so now let's see here what is the meaning of this semen so already in previous uh, parts we will discuss that uh, the semen is equal to seminal plasm or seminal plasm seminal plasm plus sperms together called as semen so now this seminal plasm is the secretions of three glands so that is the three glands are a pair of seminal vesicles and unpaired prostate gland and pair of bulbo urethral glands or maybe cowper's gland secretes this seminal plasm so the seminal plasm along with the sperms together called as the semen now a single ejaculation of semen may contain 300 million sperms ejaculation means to release out so during insemination the semen which is released into the female reproductive system contains 300 million sperms site of fertilization in female reproductive system so fertilization takes place in ampullary isthmic junction of the fallopian tube or oviduct fertilization can only occur if the ovum and sperm are transported simultaneously to the ampullary isthmic junction the sperms remain fertile for only about 12 to 24 hours in the female reproductive tract vagina triggers the motility of sperms by muscular contractions of the walls of the uterus and oviducts a sperm undergo number of physiological changes in order to have the ability to penetrate and fertilize an egg is called sperm capacitation so let's observe this diagram so it is a female reproductive system so as we discuss in previous slides during insemination insemination the sperms the sperms are ejaculated or released into the vaginal region in front of the cervix cervix is the mouth of uterus 
and these pumps movement is triggered by the muscle contractions of this vagina muscle contraction of the vagina as well as uh, uterus triggers the mobility of the sperms in the female reproductive tract and these uh, sperms released in front of the cervix and they travel to the site of fertilization that is ampullary isthmus junction this is the region for the site of fertilization where the sperm fuses with the ovum and in this uh, female reproductive system the ovum survives sorry sperm survive 12 to 24 hours for this survival of sperm in female reproductive system the sperm is released along with the seminal plasm that is semen so that seminal plasm consists uh, nutrients which provide the nourishment to the sperms for the survival in the female reproductive system arrival of secondary oocyte into site of uh, fertilization secondary oocyte is released from the matured graafian follicle of an ovary this process is called uh, ovulation first step release of uh, secondary oocyte from matured graafian follicle is called as uh, ovulation ovulation the secondary oocyte is received by infundibulum and sent into the fallopian tube by movements of fimbria and their cilia the secondary oocyte can be fertilized only within 24 hours after its release from the ovary let's see the diagram previously already we observed this semen that means uh, the sperms are released at the cervix region that means through vagina it is released in front of cervix and it is travel in the uterus and up to move to the site of fertilization and uh, similarly the ovum is also reach need to reach to this uh, site ampullary isthmus junction at that site only fertilization will takes place so now ovary releases the ovum by rupturing the matured graafian follicle that is ovulation so then ovum is release that ovum is collects into the a white a funnel shape a structure of fallopian tube or oviduct called as infundibulum so that collection is done by the a finger like structures present uh, on the edge of this infundibulum called uh, fimbria so this movement of fimbria as well as uh, internally the fallopian tube is lined with a cilia so the movement of cilia and the movement of fimbria the ovum is travels towards the ampullary isthmic isthmic junction so in previous uh, we are already said one statement uh, for successful fertilization sperm and ovum 
simultaneously need to travel towards this site of fertilization that is ampullary isthmic junction then only the fertilization will takes place and moreover the ovum life span it can survive only 24 hours after its release from the ovary The female reproductive tract is a strongly acidic. Very few numbers of sperms can reach the egg. The secretions of seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and bulboerythral glands in the semen contain nutrients which activate the sperm. The secretions of these glands are also neutralize the acidity in the vagina. Alkaline medium makes the sperms more active. Let's recollect the acidic nature of female reproductive tract. It is due to the presence of the female reproductive tract is strongly acidic. It is due to presence of lactic acid so it create the acidic medium in the vagina so due to this acidic nature only few sperms will reach to the egg even though a single ejaculation contains 300 million sperm among these 300 million only few numbers of sperms can reach the egg and the secretions of this accessory glands male accessory glands uh, in the semen called as uh, seminal plasma and the seminal plasma plus sperms together we will called as the semen contain the nutrients that nutrients are present in the secretions of this uh, male accessory gland, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, bulboerythral or corpus gland. And these nutrients are helpful to activate the sperms by providing nourishment. And this seminal plasma present in semen is also helpful for neutralize the acidic nature in the female reproductive system so when it is neutralized the female reproductive medium become alkaline this alkaline medium in the female reproductive tract makes the sperms more active the fertilization process involves three major steps they are penetration of the sperm into the ovum activation of the ovum or egg ovum is also known as is also known as egg and the third process that is uh, fusion of sperm and the egg nucleus or ovum nucleus are the three major steps during fertilization process penetration of the sperm into the ovum that is the first major step in the fertilization process so as the sperm reach the ovum it brings about the sequence of events described below so in that sequence of event first event is breaking of the membrane covering the acrosomal region of the sperm already we know the structure of the sperm the sperm head region having a cap like structure it is called as the acrosome 
the cap like structure on the head region it is called acrosome and the membrane covering on the acrosome is first breaks and then after breaking of that membrane covering this acrosome it releases the chemical substance or maybe enzymes called as the spermolysins which are present in the acrosome this is also studied during the structure of sperm human sperm so acrosome it is a cap like structure present in head region and it contains the enzymes like hyaluronidase and acrosin they are called as the sperm lysins that enzymes and uh, it is helpful for the penetration of the sperm into the ovum so during fertilization acrosome part of sperm is more essential so in the sequence of events the first event in the first step of penetration is breaking of membrane covering over this acrosomal region and as a result when the membrane is broken down it releases the sperm lysins that is enzymes present in the acrosome so this sperm lysin contains number of the chemicals let's see what are that chemicals so the chemicals present in the uh, acrosome that is a sperm lysins are the hyaluronidase and another one is the acrosin these are the two chemicals which are called as the sperm lysins now let's see the what are the functions of this uh, sperm lysins hyaluronidase it is an enzyme that acts and dissolves the ground substance that binds the follicle cells of the ovum together and form the corona radiata so what it dissolves the corona radiata or the cells are glued means stick together by a chemical substance called as the hyaluronic acid so this hyaluronic acid is dissolved by an enzyme called as the hyaluronidase enzyme that hyaluronidase enzyme is uh, released by acrosome by breaking of its membrane now corona penetrating enzymes that dissolves corona radiator region that means uh, corona penetrating enzyme that is uh, hyaluronidase enzyme dissolves the corona radiator region so by dissolving this glued substance that is a sticky substance present between that is hyaluronic acid is dissolves as a result it is become easy path to penetrate the sperm with the ovum and then next uh, a chemical substance that is uh, acrosin it is also called as zona lysin an enzyme that helps the digest the zona pellucida region so it is a, a area around the uh, plasma membrane of the secondary oocyte so it is secreted by zona pellucida is secreted by the cells of corona radiata as well as secondary oocyte this zona pellucida is made up of a glycoproteins this we are studied in the previous part and uh, this zona pellucida is also digested by an enzyme acrosin or maybe zona lysin remember lysin lysis means breakdown and next event after the breaking of a membrane and releasing of chemicals and that chemical action on this corona radiator and zona pellucida then there is a protein uh, present on the sperm surface that is called as the fretilin proteins present on the sperm surface acts as a egg recognition proteins to recognize the gametes ovum of the same species so 
this is a one important point how this sperm will recognize the ovum so due to presence of this fritillin proteins on the surface of the sperm which are helpful for recognize the gametes ovum of the same species now what are the factors which is required for the acrosomal reaction so the major factors that is a ph alkaline medium ph and calcium ions and magnesium ions concentration and temperature are essential for the acrosomal reaction in the absence of calcium ions the fertilization does not occur so let's see this uh, diagram and here the entire inside the we are called as this region is uh, a secondary oocyte region secondary oocyte and it is surrounded by the membrane it is called this membrane is called as the plasma membrane this membrane it is a plasma membrane and around this area it is called as the zona pellucida this zona pellucida is uh, provided by the, that means produced by corona radiata cells as well as uh, secondary oocyte and these uh, zona pellucida are made up of glycoproteins and uh, the radiating cells present around the this uh, secondary oocyte are called as the corona radiata now this sperm acrosome releases the a chemicals that is called as the hyaluronidase enzyme as well as sperm lysine acrosin these together called as the sperm lysine so now the sperm lysine we can uh, define like this that is uh, a breaking substances released by the sperm the substances which are helpful for breakdown of this corona radiata and zona pellucida so now hyaluronidase an enzyme it is helpful for the dissolving the glue substance present between the corona radiata so the corona radiata cells are stick one together or glued together by hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid this hyaluronic acid is dissolved by hyaluronidase enzyme as a result the corona radiator cells become loosened and it is easy to move this sperm and next acrosin or zona lysine enzyme which is digest this uh, zona pellucida and make this sperm easy to penetrate into the ovum so next sequence is that as the sperm come in contact with zona pellucida after dissolving the hyaluronic acid between the corona radiata cells and digesting the zona pellucida when contact with zona pellucida acrosome turns inside out and releases chemicals that dissolves the vitelline and plasma membrane of the egg at the point of contact so look at this uh, diagrams this is acrosome and it releases the uh, sperm lysine from the acrosome and when it comes in contact with this uh, zona pellucida it releases the chemicals and it turns inside out so acrosome from inside it become outside and releases the chemicals and which dissolves the vitelline and plasma membrane of the egg at the point of contact so as a result the entry of sperm in the egg cytoplasm the sperm will enters into the cytoplasm of the secondary oocyte or ovum now 
entry of more than one sperm it is called as the polyspermy is prevented by chemical changes on the surface of the egg zona pellucida along with the vitelline membrane thickens and separates from the plasma membrane that is called as fertilization membrane it prevents the polyspermy and it ensures the fertilization of egg with only one sperm called as monospermy so here two terms are there monospermy and polyspermy polyspermy means entry of more than one sperm into the egg is called as polyspermy monospermy entry of only one sperm into the ovum is called as monospermy so polyspermy is uh, prevented by the thickening of zona pellucida along with the vitelline membrane it prevents the polyspermy because uh, 300 million sperms are released during ejaculation in that few sperms are reaches to the site of fertilization in that few sperms only one sperm will fuses with the ovum or penetrate into the ovum a number of physical and chemical events takes place in response to egg and sperm fusion the first event the egg becomes activated and the depolarization of its membrane occurs and the second event the egg shows cortical reaction in which enzyme rich cortical granules located just below the egg membrane fuses with the membrane and releases their content into the space between egg membrane and the vitelline membrane the hardened vitelline membrane now called as the fertilization membrane serves as the barrier for the entry of other sperms that means uh, the fertilization membrane prevents the polyspermy the space between fertilization membrane and the plasma membrane is called perivitelline membrane sorry perivitelline space this reaction makes the egg impervious to any second sperm and prevent polyspermy impervious means uh, not to allow so this reaction that means formation of fertilization membrane makes the egg impervious not to allow any second sperm that means more than one sperm into the ovum let's see this diagram here the some of the labelings are given here when sperm contact uh, uh, with the zona pellucida so due to zona lysin or maybe acrosin this is digested and it is penetrated so now here the vitelline membrane which is present between that is zona pellucida and around this uh, uh, plasma membrane that is uh, vitelline membrane and uh, the space present between this vitelline membrane this membrane and plasma membrane this region is called as this region is called uh, perivitelline space so now when sperm comes in contact with the secondary oocyte the second meiosis is triggered in the secondary oocyte so second meiosis or meiosis 2 is takes place uh, at the time of fertilization when soon the sperm contacts with the secondary oocyte then it triggers the meiosis 2 division 
as a result it produces on large wood tight and uh, a small polar body is produced now this uh, the vitelline membrane after digestion of this zona pellucida the vitelline membrane is become fertilization membrane and this fertilization membrane acts as a barrier to prevent entry of more sperms it prevent polyspermy and this polar body here the labeling it is formed due to the second meiosis division of primary oocyte and uh, this sperm releases the male pronucleus and female pronucleus both are fused together to form the zygote step in the process of fertilization that is activation of the ovum as the sperm enters the secondary oocyte it gets activated and undergo second meiotic division it is also called second meiotic division is also termed as it is uh, also called as equational division that means it is uh, equational division equational division as a result the secondary oocyte produces haploid ovum it is also called oocyte and a polar body the polar body degenerates and ovum contains haploid number of chromosomes that is uh, it is a 1n condition and it consists 23 chromosomes third step in the process of fertilization is a fusion of the sperm and the egg nucleus so fusion of sperm pronucleus and egg pronucleus restores the diploid number of chromosomes so the diploid number of chromosomes in an human that is 46 chromosomes now the egg is haploid and it consists 23 chromosomes and sperm is haploid it also consists 23 chromosomes so during fusion both are fused together and it restores regains its diploid nature that is 46 chromosomes then this single diploid cell is called as zygote so now this zygote consists 46 chromosomes in this 46 chromosomes it contains both so 23 chromosomes from the sperm that is parental or paternal and 23 chromosomes from maternal mother so zygote contains the chromosomes from the paternal father as well as the chromosomes from the mother present in the zygote and uh, the zygote is the beginning cell of the new multicellular individual so all the multicellular organisms start their life at a single cell stage that is called as zygote is a unicellular and later it become multicellular individual and after immediately after formation of the zygote after fertilization the zygote undergoes first mitotic division or maybe cleavage divisions remember once after zygote formation the all the divisions are the mitotic the zygote always undergoes mitotic division the next concept the sex of the child so simply we can say sex determination of the child
the sex of a child is decided as zygote is formed so the sex either male or female that is decided as zygote form while forming zygote itself the sex of the child is decided so the sex is determined by determined by the chance of fusion of egg and a sperm so as we know the females are having a sex chromosomes x and x it is a 2n condition deployed when meiosis is occurred in this sex chromosomes it forms the haploid gametes that means each gamete contains only x chromosome now as we know the males are consists a sex chromosome x and y it is in diploid condition when meiosis is occurs they produce two kinds of sperms 50% of sperms contains x chromosome and remaining 50% of sperms contain y chromosome so once see x and y it is diploid condition when meiosis is occurred the 50% of sperms will contain x chromosome and 50% of sperms contain y chromosome whereas if you observe the female it consists both x chromosome when meiosis is occurred all the gametes ova consists only x chromosome there is no variation in the gametes there is a variation in the sperms so some sperms contain x chromosome and some sperms contain y chromosome at the time of fertilization if the sperm containing sperm containing x chromosome fertilizes an egg so already we know that the egg consists always x and it is a uh, fuses with a sperm containing x that means the fusion of egg and sperm results the zygote which consists x and x represent the female child now if sperm containing y chromosome containing y chromosome is fuses with the egg already we said that egg is always consists x chromosome and as a result it results xy that represent the male now since there is an equal probability of an egg combining with x containing sperm or y containing sperm there is 50% of chance of an offspring being a female and 50% of chance of being a male so then final statement scientifically it is proved that the sex of child is determined by the father not by mother because father consists heterogenic that means hetero means different chromosomes are present in the male that is in the father that is x chromosome and y chromosome two different chromosomes are present in the father that's why he decides either male or female
child is depends on the the sperm which contain a type of the chromosome if sperm containing x chromosome then the resultant is the female if sperm contain y chromosome the resultant is male so here it is uh, diagrammatic representation of this uh, sex determination in the child so here female it is always represent uh, xx chromosome that is uh, diploid and male is heterogenic that is uh, xy so when meiosis is occurred in this uh, reproductive cell the meiosis when meiosis is occurred during gamete formation females all the gametes that is ova consists x chromosome whereas when meiosis is occurred in the reproductive cell consists xy chromosomes meiosis occurred here and it forms two different types of uh, gametes with x chromosome 50% of the gametes with x chromosomes and remaining 50% of gametes with y chromosome so now when sperm with x chromosome and egg are fused during fertilization then it results the female and when the sperm with y chromosome fuses with the egg and it results the male so the probability that means the chance of a male child or maybe female child born of male and female child is 50% that is depends on the male parent that is father not on the mother thank you students we can discuss one more concept in the next